The Committee of the Whole is called to order. Hello and nice warm evening today. It's very nice to see a nice crowd turn up, even though it is a tad on the warm side. Uh, Alderman Groff, would you call the order? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sir Richards, would you call the roll, please? Solomon? Deberg. Here. Eber. Here. Serta. Here. Davis. Here. Groff. Here. Kittleson. Here. Manny. Here. Montemayor. Here. Radke. He's on his way. He said he might be late. Sagali. Here. Stefan. Here. Susha. Here. Van Akron. Here. And Vanderbilt. Here. 15 present. There's a quorum present. Thank you so much, Sue. I need a motion for the approval of the minutes of July 11. I would so move that we approve the minutes from July 11th. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We'll now continue on with our agenda. We have some communications that we're going to see if some of the, the citizens are here, if they would like to speak, and then we will continue on with our agenda. It looks as though it should go fairly quickly this evening. Uh, is Mary Ann Pittner here? Um, I have to make yes. a motion, first of all. Oh, yes. <laughs> Alderman Groff. You're, um, Madam Chairperson, I will move that communication number 2405-06 be um, filed. Any discussion? No, you ask it. Is, is Mary Ann Pittner here? Did she want to speak about her letter? Any other further discussion? Oh, Madam Chair. Yes. Just so um, all the older persons know, I did contact each of the, uh, the people that um, we had received communications from, and the only one um, I know that will not be here is Mark Kramer. So everybody was asked if they wanted to show up and speak to their, their um, communications, and apparently Marianne Pittner is not in the audience, so she chose not to, to come in. We have read her communication and done um, discussion on it, so it wasn't simply ignored. Thank you so much, Alderman Graf. We have a motion to file. Do you have a second? Mm -hmm. Yes. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none. Motion carries. Agenda item number five. Communication and number six. Communications from John Winter regarding his opinions on the new list of the sites for the police station. And Madam Chair. Yes, please. I would move that both communication 2705-06 and communication number 3605-06 be filed. We have a second. Second. We have a motion and a second to file communications from John Winter. John Winter, I see you here. Would you like to talk with us? Sure. Thank you. John, can you give me your home address, please? 2313 Broadway. Since everybody should have a copy of the communication, just to briefly explain and assume if I do have five minutes or... No, you have as long as you want. Oh, okay. well, trust me. <laughs> um, the, uh, the communication we have... Uh, I'm just going to kind of hit the high points or the highlights of the, uh, of, the, of the two letters I sent. The first letter I sent initially was uh, the first list of sites ever uh, picked by yourselves. And at that time, uh, and then shortly after that, some sites were removed and the Vandervart site was added. So the second letter is basically a follow-up to the first, kind of re, uh, redoing my, uh, my site list. Um, the, the, I just want to hit some high points or highlights of uh, the letter I had just to kind of emphasize that. And the first location I wish to speak about is the, is the police garage site. And, and to be honest with you, I'm kind of confused about how this one got to the top of the list. Uh, because using the same reasons that were used to discredit the Sheridan site, I would think the garage, the police garage site would be the last one to consider. Uh, some of the examples, it was said that at Sheridan, the Sheridan site was too small, 2.6 acres, and yet the police garage site is only one acre. Uh, secondly, they said that a two-story building on Sheridan was inefficient, and yet uh, uh, if they build next to the next to City Hall, that would be a three or four acre, or, I mean, I'm sorry, three or four-story building. I guess to me that would be inefficient as well. And lastly, they said that there was not enough parking around the Sheridan site, yet there is already a serious parking crunch around the current City Hall site, 
And if we built uh, next to City Hall, that would just make that parking crunch even, even worse than what it already is. Uh, plus, by, uh, taking, by building next to the City Hall, it would take away uh, an existing parking lot, or at least part of it. That would take away some parking revenue. And in addition to that, um, uh, the, I guess my question is, where would the police garage go? Because right now, the uh, garage we have isn't even big enough to uh, house the, the vehicles we have. And we certainly can't be parking them outside and, and uh, uh, just because of the equipment in them. Uh, the next location is the 23rd Street site. Uh, it, quite obvious that this appears to be a favorite among a lot of people. But I have, a lot of con I have some concerns about this site. First off is the contamination on the site. I know there is some contamination, but it's not real clear to me how much there is. Uh, I guess there's conflicting reports out there that some say it's a lot, some say it's not so bad. I don't know. But uh, from what I understand is that the county is asking us to clean up their mess. And that's the part I don't find uh, acceptable. The next is a land swap deal. And, and from what I hear right now, and of course the county has nothing, in, at least that I know of, has nothing in writing right now, so I don't know how to uh, base this on. But from what I understand in the land swap deal is that we would give them land downtown, uh, some prime real estate, and in exchange we would have to pay them plus we'd have to build them a salt shed. Uh, to me, I just see that as being a bad deal, and we're getting the short end of the stick on that one. So I'm not in, not in a big favor of that as well. The other, uh, the last item is um, concern I have is about the shared services, and and this is still not clear to me how site location and shared services are related. Uh, currently, the police department and the sheriff department uh, share several or numerous uh, services, such as a drug unit, dive team, uh, communication system, computer system, <coughs> investigative tools the current indoor and outdoor range, uh, canine unit, and several community policing projects and police committees. For some reason, it is still believed that the Sheriff Department will build next to the 23rd Street site. Uh, I think numerous times it's been said that they won't. Uh, I have the fortune of working with uh, Sheriff Helmke. Um, if I didn't have Chief Kirk as my boss, I would certainly want Sheriff Helmke to be my boss. And I certainly respect the man. And when I asked him about this, he said, to me straight out, he says they would not, if, if he had his way about it, they would not build on 23rd Street because it would not make sense just to go, just to move a couple miles down the road. His idea would be if they would move, would be to go build in the center part of the uh, uh, county out towards Plymouth. Uh, with that in mind, I guess the, the big question is if they would move. And to my understanding right now, and talking to some county board members, is that they don't have any short range or long range plans to even move the sheriff department anywhere, much less move it on 23rd Street. So that, that kind of confuses me the whole thing. And, and as far as the, uh, uh, the site location, I don't see that as, as being uh, the best site. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is the Vandervart site. I personally see this as a win-win-win situation. Uh, it's a win for property taxes because in my, my understanding is that the Vandervart uh, company is willing to do a land swap deal. Uh, that means they are willing, they are willing to uh, swap land, give us the land where they are currently. And I'm not sure, I keep hearing like it's 15 acres, 19 acres, 20 acres. Uh, the press kind of has numbers jumbling around, so I'm not sure how many acres this is. But the bottom line is, uh, my, my understanding is that they're gonna, they're gonna swap land for, uh, for land in the industrial park. Uh, I think this would be a very good uh, situation for the city. It would allow Vandervart to stay in the, in the city, which means they continue to pay property taxes as they do now. So would they would not be losing, or the city would not be losing anything. Uh, secondly, I think it's a good win for the taxpayers. Not only do we retain the taxes that Vandervart pays, but also would, uh, we would have the additional acreage uh, that could be used for a variety of reasons, such as residential zoning, business zoning, or light industrial zoning. Uh, and lastly, it's a win for the police department. For reasons that it doesn't fit here at the police garage site, I think this place is a perfect fit. You have plenty of room to build. You don't have to build a multi-story building uh, that you can build. You can build, go ahead and build a one-story building with plenty of room for parking. In addition to that, its location is ideal. If it's built near, to, near the intersection of South Business and Broadway, which would be the south end of their, of their property, it would be visible to citizens and visitors. It would be located along one of the main north-south roads through the city, since South Business Drive, 14th Street, and Calumet are considered their, our main arterial through the city. It would be built along that. And it would also um, uh, be 
It will also look like part of the community. It will be built in a mixed uh, residential and business area, and it will look like it fits uh, in, the in, the, in the community uh, rather than 23rd Street where it's kind of stuck out next to an open field and a, and a shed. Um, uh, this location, like I say, also, I feel that it also meets the needs of being centrally located. Uh, the city right now is expanding to the south. It seems like that's the only direction we can go. And since it is moving to the south, uh, that business and Broadway area would become more centrally located. Uh, lastly, uh, I think if there are whatever concerns there still are out there about shared services, I think the Vandervart site could meet whatever those concerns are. Uh, my last comments are this, is that it, it, it still bothers me that there are a lot of people out there that still claim they think they know what's best for the police department. I guess what bothers me with that is the fact that how many of these people have actually studied the issue and have come out and taken a tour, or looked at what we have and see what our issues are. Um, a number of older persons here have taken that opportunity to do that. I think that with the, with the understanding we have right now, and, and, I, and I work for the police department, so obviously I have a good idea of what our needs are. But at the same time, I'm not going to stand up here and say I know it all, because there's certainly a lot of areas I don't know what our needs are. And so we have people like Deputy Chief Weiss and Chief Kirk and everything to, to put all the pieces together. But even with that, I don't know everything there is to know, and yet there's other people out there who, in my opinion at least, don't seem to know anything at all, and yet they're trying to tell us what we need. The one thing I do know is that our current location is a dangerous place to work. It has numerous safety issues, and not only for the officers and the civilian employees that work there, but also for the citizens that come there and visit as well. We've had citizens be knocked over by, by, uh, uh, by prisoners. We've had citizens that had to put up with foul language used by, by uh, prisoners as well because these people are intermixing. That should never happen in a police department, and that's opening ourselves to liability. At this time, I just feel we need, we need to take more action. We need to move along with this as quickly as possible. And as far as the delay tactics, such as a referendum, I think those things aren't needed. Thank you. Thank you, John Winter. Um, I think we will be getting some more information from Vandervaart because they've sent a letter to us, so we'll be getting more information. Were you able to hear what uh, the information that came from Chairman Bill Gehring and Adam Payne this past meeting? No, I was not. Okay, Th that did explain a lot of things, and we do have that information, so you can, you can have that. Thank you, John Winter. Any further discussion? He can't speak. Carter? Carter, we can only talk to John Winter about John Winter's um, communication. That's all we can talk with now. Thank but, you. Yes. That is what I will speak to specifically. <laughs> because I constantly keep hearing about the 23rd no. Street no, no. site. No, but Carter, Carter, you're not on the agenda for this particular thing. So I want to hear what you're saying, but... We, we, we would be breaking the rules if we did that, Carter. I, I thank you. Who is John Winter? Oh, the gentleman who just spoke. That's whom yes. I want to answer. He mentioned. I, no, I'm, I think, Carter, talk to him later. Talk to him later. You don't want it public. Oh, no, no. I think we need to follow the rules. That's oh, all. That, very good. Nothing else, I'll Carter. save my remarks for the Common Council. Okay. The whole. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you so much. To yes, we have the motion to file and the second. Any further? Anything further that you want to say, John Winter? No, that's it. Thank you. All in favor of filing? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Nope. Motion passes. Council agenda number seven, RO number 122-0506, communication from Dimple Adams stating she is asking council to please give the police department the opportunity to share their concerns and considerations with regard to picking the police station site. Madam Chairperson, I would move that that communication be placed on file. Second. Second. There's been a motion and a second to place the communication on file. Any discussion? Or is Dimple Adams here? All those in favor of filing? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. <laughs> I understand my grandson wanted to talk on that. Sorry, you're not on the agenda, grandson. <laughs> Council agenda number eight, RO number 124 0506, 
submitting a communication from Mark Kramer requesting that the council considers the land he owns at the southwest corner of South Business Drive and Broadway for the new police site. And Mark Kramer is not with us this evening. I'll entertain a motion to file. So moved, Madam Chairperson. Any further discussion? We have a motion and a second to file. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Council agenda number nine. Discussion of Zimmerman report if available and possible elimination of some sites. It's not available, however, I think our wonderful mayor has something to say. <clears throat> Am I on? Yes, you are. Thank you, Madam Chair. Today I received a preliminary report that is still in draft form by Mr. John Sabinash, and this is regarding the site analysis of the five sites and we'll refer to him for analysis. Because it was in draft form, I was concerned that perhaps I should not issue it out to the alderman or to the media. I called Mr. Zimmerman and asked him specifically, is there any concern should I decide to do that? He said, none whatsoever, so long as the alderman understand it is still in draft form. But it's in draft form because it still needs some exhibits, some visuals. The, the summary itself will not substantially change when the final report is, is sent to us towards the end of the week. So it was perfectly all right for him, for me to share the report, which I will do, and no one has seen it by myself, with the alderman today, and I will hand it out to the media also and to the police department so that they can see it. And I will ask uh, Ms. Susan Hart to pass the first part out. And as she does that, I'll just mention some of the very basic key findings here. What she is passing out is the summary of the findings that were, that were done by Mr. John Sabinas or the Zimmerman Group. And as the oh, alderman are getting the, uh, the report, please note there is a, an email cover page, so to speak. This is the email that I got today at uh, 1.46 p.m. A subsequent email came about 4.30 in which uh, Mr. Zimmerman emailed me the second part, which I will hand to you right after this. I'm sure the police department uh, and uh, planning and engineering too. Yes. Now I'll just quickly run through this report and the Alderman of course are free to, to uh, interpret the data and analyze the data themselves. But what Mr. John, uh, what Mr. John Sabiners did is he did uh, an analysis of the site and as you'll see under site, he did a program orientation, topography, demolition, construction, et cetera. <laughs> then he did the uh, engineering aspect of it, uh, utilities, geotechnical, grading, contamination, very similar to what our city planning and engineering department did before. And then he also evaluated the economic uh, aspect of it and the intangibles. And the economic, for example, acquisition, timing, staging, tax, immediate cost, intangibles, amenities, image, neighborhood, philosophy, et cetera. He has all these, uh, this four uh, components that, that he an analyzed. And as you will see, City Hall came in with a, scored 142 points. 23rd Street scored 148. And those are the two top choices that uh, were valid, that were uh, found by Mr. John Sabinash. The drop off site scored a 91, substantially lower. The Penn Avenue site, 90 substantially lower, and the Vandervaart, an 86, substantially lower than the 23rd site and City Hall site. And these are the findings that were, again, found by Mr. John Sabinus, the uh, Zimmerman Group, that this committee of the whole asked uh, to evaluate the, the five sites that the council had already selected. Next, I will pass out the, uh, the budget costs that are associated with each site. 
And again, I don't know that the committee of the whole wants to get into a lot of depth into this tonight. They may want to take it home with them, talk, talk it over, chat about it, evaluate the information. But I felt it was important enough, since you had it in the agenda, that uh, at least the uh, preliminary report be, should be handed out. Thank you, Susan. Okay. And as a caveat, as I said, this is a draft, but I was also cautioned that it's not going to change substantially at all. The summary will not change much. And there again, as you go down the, uh, the budget, the costs that are projected for, the, uh, for the each site, you'll see the, the, the five sites that are there. You'll see the, uh, the, the costs associated, for example, with professional fees. Of course, when the Committee of the Whole or even the Council wants to go through these, they may say, this is not an item we'd like to spend any money on. This is an item we can do without, et cetera, et cetera. But you've got uh, permitted fees, professional fees, utility costs, Telecommunication technology. You have furniture, furnishes, and furnishing and equipment. You have special equipment. That's the laundry equipment, food service, all that kind of stuff, etc. Occupancy ex expenses and administrative. And, as, and if you will go to the last page, that'll give you the grand total project. And it's broken down in cost options A, B, and C. And you'll be able to to make that uh, to be able to ascertain that just by looking at the report. And I think it's a good idea for the alderman to get it today, have have some time to think about it, write some questions down when Mr. Savinas is ready to present the final report to the to the council. But again, as you'll see, the the grand total project cost uh, for City Hall, for example, would be eighteen million five twenty eight and six hundred and fifty. The 23rd site would be 18,367,500. The drop-off site would be 18,458,950. The Pan Avenue site, as you'll notice, the, the cost keeps going up here, 19,388,450. The Vandervaart site, 19,788,950. The projected costs associated with each site as determined by the Zimmerman Group, Mr. John Sabin, I said, was emailed to me today, late in the day. And again, I inquired as to whether I should share this with the, count, with the alderman and the public. There is no problem with that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. I bet we're going to cut some money out of some of these things. Well, we have this information. We, of course, we just received it, so I would imagine we're not going to do anything with it this evening. So, Committee of the Whole meeting, next one. I think, tentatively, I was thinking August 1, 6 o'clock, before the regular council meeting. Any discussion on that? Alderman Groff, what did you want to say about that? Uh, August 1st would be uh, tentatively, but uh, if it could be 545. That's because, a good idea. Um, because we do have to sign papers yes. again for um, the August end. Uh, I did speak to the Vanderbart people uh, today and um, arranged a, um, a meeting with them on August 1st. All right. Um, to, to start at 545 for them to uh, present to us what, what various options they have available um, for us to look at and so forth. So um, I did speak to them today. I expect to get it confirmed either tomorrow or Wednesday because um, it was all done through administrative staff at Vanderbart, not with Mike um, Harvey. All right. Thank you, Alderman Graff. Thank you, Alderman Graff. So we're all prepared for more work, more meetings. August I, 1, 545. Yes. I would move to adjourn if, if that's in order. Second? All in favor of adjourn? Aye. Opposed? We stand adjourned. <laughs>